Well, welcome everyone to this month's webinar. Um, I am Bruce Rosenblatt with Senior Housing Solutions. And if you didn't know, I am the, the matchmaker of senior housing. And so I, I do a lot of matchmaking and finding the right senior housing for, for people in this area. I've been doing this for my company, 16 years old, and I've been involved in senior housing for over 30 years. And, and part of what I do is I, I wanna be a resource for people. So these types of educational seminars uh, are, are important. But more than that, I, I feel like I have a, a toolbox of people. So when people come to me and they say, Bruce, you know, do you know, you know, someone who is an expertise in something that I, I have that right person. And, and because of that, um, I, I was getting people coming to me and they were saying, Bruce, you know, do you, you know, I want to stay at home. I'm not ready to move, but I need some extra help at home. You know, it, do you have a home health care you know, agency that you would recommend? And so I, I spent a lot of time and effort uh, researching and vetting different organizations and agencies and um, have found a, a wonderful partner with Bright Star Care. Uh, they are locally based. And, and so um, we have Susan here, who is the vice president of Bright Star, and she's going to tell you a little bit about what they do and how to choose the right agency. So welcome, Susan. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So, so Susan, can you talk a little bit about, you know, our partnership and why you all decided to partner with, with us? Absolutely. You know, when, to go back a few years during the pandemic, a lot of people had started to reach out to us on a variety of resources and different things. And that really got me on a mission that I want to be that resource, that advocate for our clients. And whether they're looking for senior housing or a physician or someone to do modifications in their home, we recognized people were coming to us. I wanted to partner with someone like you because that is a big thing in what we do. Um, we have obviously our current patients that might need to transition to a facility or we have patients that need transitional care while they're in a community. And as we build our partnerships in the community, I want to choose companies that have people that have those same values and missions that we do. And that was what instantly drew me to you was, I do see how much you care for your clients, that you want the best outcome for them and the time that you put into that. And that really aligned with our mission, our vision and our values. And I thought together, you know, that would be, you know, a match made in senior, you know, care that would really help our community and take the talents and the resources we have to serve more people and help more people on this aging journey. Well, thank you. And I, I feel the same way. So, so Susan, you know, the home health care business is, is very competitive. There's something like 150 home health care companies in this area. So can you talk about the differences you know, between, you know, the home health care so people can understand, you know, the differences between, you know, an agency and a registry and, and what people should look for when, when selecting a home health care company? Absolutely. So I think there's a variety of things that people should be looking for when they're selecting home care. You have the option of agencies, which is our employees are our employees. We know them, we vet them, we train them, we have a relationship, and we oversee and manage that care. With registries, it's more of a subcontractor connection. So there's not that ongoing oversight um, or relationship. Those are 1099 employees. And then there's hiring people on your own, which is a true gamble because you really just don't know what you're getting. I think when you're looking at home care, it's really important to ask those questions. Are your employees your employees? How are they licensed, bonded, and insured? Who's covering their workers' compensation? There's so many um, choices in Southwest Florida for home care. 
And, you know, it can be daunting and it can be confusing. There's definitely a lot of registries or private caregivers that appear agency-like, um, but really being able to ask those questions are important. Uh, what separates us is, well, yes, you're right. There's well over 150 in Southwest Florida. There's only a handful that do skilled services and non-skilled services. So we're one of those. And that means we have a director of nursing, an RN, who oversees all the care we provide. We provide both medical and non-medical care. So we have certified nursing assistants, home health aides to help you with your personal care, your activities of daily living, transportation, meals, med reminders. And then we have nurses. So we have LPNs and RNs to help with any skilled needs, whether that could be case management, medication management, medication administration, teaching, wound care, et cetera. And we also do PT and OT. What's really nice about that is that we meet you where you are on your aging journey and we can grow with you. So maybe you're come to us now and you need a couple hours a day um, or a couple hours a week, but in you know time that changes or grows or you wanna add on that service, you can do that all under one roof and it's still all the same people that you know. I think there's a strong value to that and I think having the RN oversight is really important. I'm very passionate about medication management. And I think that when caregivers are reminding clients to take medicine, it's important that we know what is that medication? What is it for? So that we're able to make sure that they're compliant, that we're looking for adverse reactions. But people don't always think about what's the next step they might need or they're making that decision in crisis mode so they don't take the time, but really understanding the liability and the risk that you could open yourself up to with a registry in private is really important. You essentially are their employer. Uh, so, you know, you hire someone and it doesn't work out, you know, there's unemployment costs to that. If they get injured on your property, there's workers' compensation, lost wages, medical things that can occur. So all those things are challenges. And it's just the liability, you know, in my opinion, is not worth it when you're already dealing with the fact that you need to bring a caregiver in. Come choose an agency, choose a professional company that can grow with you, grow on your aging journey. And that's looking out, you know, for all aspects of your situation to make sure you're protected. I was with a family this this week, and uh, they said they have they hired these two women, you know, that they probably met like at Publix or something, and you know that the mom gets along with them, you know, and so they 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 thought that that was the right move, and I said, well, you know, things could go south very quickly, and they do, and and I'm sure Susan, you've seen it, I've seen, you know, I've seen changes of wills, I've seen, you know bad things happen. And like you said, there's just a lot of liability if someone gets hurt in your home and, and people don't think about things like that. They don't. And I think a lot of it too is like, you don't know what you don't know. Um, if you're not working in this industry or you've had a connection to the industry, there's a lot of misconceptions about home care. And so I think by the time it comes that someone's looking for home care, they're probably not thinking about liability or risk to them. What if that person gets you know, injured or injured my parent or what if that person gets hurt or can't work or whatever. They're thinking about the need that I have. My mom is sick. I need this care. And and I certainly understand that, which is where I encourage people to start thinking about what does their aging journey look like? What are their wishes for senior care? And start to explore and have those conversations at an earlier time so you're not making a decision in a crisis mode. You want to be informed as you get to meet people. Uh, you want to choose a company that that has the same values as you, that has the same vision for your loved one's care. Uh, it's personalized care. So we we meet you. Our director of nursing meets you. We have a patient ambassador, and obviously, you know, we care about all of the care that you need. And the nurse does that assessment and creates that individual plan of care. 
And then we have the patient ambassador part who wants to know you as a person. What makes you you? What do you love so we can fill that time with purpose? And, you know, the visit isn't just the bathing, the dressing, the toileting, but it's that connection, that companionship, building that trust and building that rapport for you know, a, a wonderful experience. And then as needs change, we can grow and adapt with that. And when you bring in a company like that, that's looking at the whole picture, we're here to educate you. We're here to give you all of the information so that you can make the best informed decision for you or for your loved one. So, so that's great information. So let's talk a second about pre-planning because I know, you know, we're, we're on the same page with this about being, more proactive versus reactive and you know you don't want to be you know opening a phone book and trying to find a home health care company or an assisted living facility when you're in this you know in this crisis mode so if somebody isn't quite ready for home care but they want to pre-plan how is how how do you all work with that yeah so there's lots of you know opportunities um so we have what we call a living room visit. So if you're interested in learning about Brightstar, our services, we would want to send out one of our community liaisons to meet you in, in your home setting, wherever that may be. If you're in a community, a facility, your single family home, whatnot. And just spend time to get to know you. What, what are you looking for? What do you envision the future? And us to give you education and resources to help you as you're thinking through this. Um, I have clients that every year at the beginning of season, they come, they sign up with me and I have this lovely couple. And she says, I just want to sign up. I don't need you, but God forbid I have a fall or something. And my husband needs the care. I want to know that I already know you and you already know us. And so every year, you know, we do that with her and, and it's, it's such a delight. And I love that she's thinking about that for him. Um, and then I have some clients that every year that just call me and say, hey, we're here, you know, remember me in case you need me. Um, so, you know, pre-planning is important. It's one of those things where sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. Look, if you come down to visit your loved one at the holidays and you discover just things are off the rails, we're here for you. I'm here for you last minute. I'm here for you. If you need me today, that's great. But that's more of those urgent emergent situations. A majority of the situations out there, people could have the opportunity to pre-plan to think about it. Senior care might not just be that attractive conversation everyone wants to have, but it is the important conversation to have because you don't want to make a decision and you're making it based off of, you know, a number you got out of the phone book and you're in crisis mode. So pre-planning is important. We'll talk to you about all the services we provide, what you're looking for, as well as give you additional connections and things in the community. If there's other resources that we think would be helpful, we work a lot with the Parkinson's Association, with the Alzheimer's Association. There's different resources and things there. So if we see like, hey, you could incorporate this into your life now and that might help we would want to you know provide that and make that connection as well and, and is there a charge for this living room visit no there is absolutely no charge for our living room visits and we are happy um the guys will come out as many times as you need i've had a couple clients that you know we come out they meet with us and then they want to talk to a couple other people and do their due diligence i always encourage that and then they've called us and asked us to come back because they have some additional questions. We're more than happy to come out and chat with you as well as we do um, virtual calls. So I know that we are a seasonal area. Some people are maybe up north or their decision maker is up north or their adult children. We've done Zoom calls where we've conferenced in all the family or different things. So it's really about whatever works for each situation and, you know, whatever you need, we want to give you that information. So you're comfortable making your decision. Cause there's really kind of no other personal decision like your senior care. So, so speaking of that, you know, I, and 
you know, what we do involves a lot of, you know, relationships and personalities. And so, you know, how, how specific can somebody be on who is going to be their, their care provider? Yeah. So our patient ambassador spends, um, you know, a lot of time with our clients. So depending if, you know, you're needing, if you call today and need to start services today, or you're calling today and starting in a week, she wants to talk to you, get to know you. What do you envision for your care? Um, you know, I would be completely put off if someone came into my home and started rummaging through my cupboards and all of that. That would be very off-putting to me. But I have a client who literally called and said to me one time, I just want them to come in, find out where the trash is, it's in the cupboard and take it out. And I was like, oh my gosh, I would be so off-put if someone did that. So it's all those little nuances that we want to learn so that we can find that right connection with the caregiver. Maybe you love a chatty Kathy. Maybe you don't want a chatty Kathy. Maybe you need someone who is going to push you when you say no. And maybe you need someone that, you know, understands, you know, you're, you know, when you say no, you're tired, give a break and come back in 10 minutes or, or whatnot. Um, but we do want to know that. We do have guaranteed compatibility. So we want to do that. We also have a program called Purposeful Engagements, which is all about the caregiver and the client's relationship. So we have activities, and this is all no additional charge to the client. Tamara, our ambassador, will get to know what they like um, and put an activity bag together for them that they could be successful at that would be meaningful to them. A about a year and a half ago, I had a gentleman who went to a memory care and it was very tough. His wife was still at home with their dog. He was in memory. He loved woodworking. But obviously I was like, how are we going to bring woodworking into a memory unit, right? Well, we ended up finding these wonderful kits that were woodworking, but it was all glue based. So we did this. He made his wife a little jewelry box and painted their dog on it and gave it to her when she visited one day. And then him and the caregivers were painting every day and making little woodworking things. So it's things like that that we want to do to build those relationships. Um, you know, if a caregiver isn't working for any reason, we always want to know that as well. We want to know what wasn't going on so that we can find a better match and that we can also coach that person where needed. But Tamara's really good at spending time with the clients, families, and really digging deep to figure out what would be that right type of match, even down to the food. Great. So, you know, I think when people think about home care, they think it's just care at home. And, you know, and I know, you know, working in senior housing, being involved in senior housing, you know, that, that transition from being at home and possibly having a care provider that you have a relationship with and now moving to assisted living or moving to a memory care or even independent living. And so can you talk more about this transitional care program that you all offer? Yeah, absolutely. So transitional care is, is just that. We're there to help you transition to a facility lifestyle. I have worked with people that we have just been there for a couple of days or a couple of weeks while they acclimate to the new community. We've had people that we've stayed on with them. And I've had communities call me and say, hey, we have a client coming in. They're kind of struggling. We'd like to have one-on-one. -on -one. Would you be willing to come in? And we've done that. Uh, the transitional care is all about making sure that it's a happy and successful move for the client. We want them to feel comfortable in their new surroundings, in that new community, and sometimes it can be, you know, overwhelming to maybe walk to the activities room by yourself where you know nobody, but your caregiver can go with you and, you know, introduce you or do the painting with you or, or whatnot. So I think it's really each situation is individual and it's about what that outcome is needing and how we can support that. Very, very valuable. And you also can help unpack things, right? You can... Yes. So we'll help them unpack. We'll help them set up their room. We'll help them get, um, you know, used to the lay of the land. We'll help, you know, guide them around and show them where the dining room is or activity room or 
different things in the community. We can help get them, you know, familiar, uh, you know, be a resource. I have one gal, she loves to just sit outside and say hi to everybody that comes to the community. So her and her caregiver do that. Um, she's like the little welcome wagon. And that's just something. So she's not out there by herself, right? So she really enjoys that, gets to do that, and she's safe. Whereas, you know, possibly one of the community workers doesn't really have the ability to sit out there for two hours with her on a bench. Um, so it's just about making that. And that really helps the community, too. Um, the communities want it to be successful. They want their clients to be happy and, and stay in their community. So if we can support that together. The, the only person that wins there is the client. So... And that's what matters most. And so we work well with the facilities and families to make sure that that is a good transition. And 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 sometimes, you know, at, at the different assisted livings or memory care, sometimes the care just isn't there enough, you know, because they're yeah. caring for other people and someone has to get to the bathroom at, you know, at three o'clock in the morning and they need to have somebody there to help them. And so having, you know, this transitional care would be really important in that, in that scenario. The best advice I could give someone is be honest with yourself about your loved one. Don't be in denial. If you know that your dad is stubborn and when he presses that button to go to the bathroom, if someone's not there instantly, he's going to try to get up on his own. Then you have to say, if he got up on his own and had a fall, would that be a risk? So should I have a caregiver? If you know that dad is someone that presses the button and will happily wait 20 minutes until someone shows up, great. Another great thing about transitional care is you really should do the diligence yourself and understand what is that facility providing. Those caregivers can be there to tell you, hey, you know, dad pressed the button and the response time was 30 minutes. Uh, even if it is just for a week or whatnot to understand that. So the family can make that decision on if they should keep a one-on-one -on -one caregiver or not the end of the day, it's about safety. And in a facility, it, there are challenges. You know, it's a certain number of caregivers to a certain number of clients. And you really have to be honest with yourself about your loved one and, you know, what their needs are and where they're at just for their safety. So true. And so I, I know Bright Star is unique in that you don't really have a, an hourly uh, yeah. minimum. And so can you just talk a little bit more about all that? Yeah, so we absolutely have no minimum on hours. Uh, so we understand that there, you know, there are clients where the need is just a one hour shower. Uh, and we are here to provide that to you. We provide everything from one hour a day to 24 seven care. Uh, we obviously do skilled nursing. We do skilled nursing visits and skilled nursing shifts. And we do PT and OT. So there's really not, anything we can't do in the home setting. And we're there for what it is that you need. Um, sometimes people, you know, money is a, a challenge and they can't afford a ton of care and a little bit of care is what they can. And we want to be there to support that. And on the flip side, if someone needed 24 seven, you all could do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we definitely do. It's something I would say that we specialize in. So we have a dedicated person that works all of our 24 seven cases and coordinating them, overseeing them and making sure that everything that goes into that is, you know, being met. There's a lot of things that can go into that. You know, you could have a client that's living at home alone with 24 seven care and, you know, they have a cat. Well, we want to make sure the cat is taken care of or does the cat get the medicine? Uh, our care isn't just about the patient. It's home care and it's all of that. So if they have a dog or a cat, we want to make sure that that's taken care of too, because we know that those relationships are very important. And I've seen people say, oh, the cat's too much for mom. So we're getting rid of it. No, you'll kill mom's spirit. Um, so we want to make sure that, you know, we are taking care of the litter or walking the dog or whatever to keep those things. So home care is it includes the home too nice so um do you want to add anything else about bright star and... well um so bright star we are a franchise we're locally owned and operated we've been here for 18 years we were the first bright star to open in florida we were the third to open in the country and we are 
all over the United States now in Canada. And um, I know they're branching out to some other places um, in 2024 that'll be excited. It's really nice. We have clients that are seasonal. We have clients that travel and it's nice that they can seamlessly go between two bright stars and get that same higher standard of care. We are also joint commission accredited. So that's one of the big differentiators between us. So there's a lot of competitors and everybody does personal care. A few of us do personal and skilled care. And then there's just two of us that are joint commission accredited, which really is just our governing body, our oversight. And it really raises the quality and safety of the care we deliver. So I think that's really important. It's the gold standard of care. You see hospitals get joint commission accredited. You don't typically see it in the home care world. Bright Star Care as a brand is the only brand nationwide that every single one of our locations is joint commission accredited. So it's wow. it's in our blood for the quality and the safety. And I think what's most important to me and you know, having the opportunity and the blessing to oversee this location is being able to spread more education, more advocacy, more awareness. The more that we can help people have conversations about aging and do it sooner, the better outcomes we can make for them. I wish people would never feel embarrassed or ashamed or in denial about a disease or something that they're battling because so often if you get help, you can really make it better. And one of the things that I see that can be sad is spouses want to take it all on themselves. And there's a lot of challenges and a lot of studies out right now that are saying the spouse caregiver is passing away before the person that they're caregiving of because of the stress. You know, we want to come in and, and take that off your plate. It doesn't make you a bad wife or a bad husband. It allows you to be the wife and the husband. You don't have to be the chef, the caregiver, the, the laundry mat, the chauffeur, the cook, the, the errand boy. You can be the husband or the wife and have that and, and let us be there in the background to provide the care. And I think when we see that, that's, that's really special and a great reminder of what we do. And I think that's what's the most meaningful. So I love being able to have these conversations with people and open up, you know, the box of senior care and let them explore so that they can make the best decision for them and their families so that they're not alone and they're not stressed and they have the support they need. That's awesome. Susan, if someone wanted to reach you or reach Bright Star, how, what is, how, how would they do that? So we're available 24 seven by phone. They can call us at 239-992-4779. Um, our office is located in Naples. We're on Immokalee Road and I-75. Obviously welcome to come and visit us anytime in person as well. Um, but yeah, give us a call, check us out on our website. We're always here and you know we would love to you know, meet you, meet your family, understand what your needs are and help you on that journey. And, and the website is brightstarcare.com. Is that correct? Brightstarcare.com, yes. And then you can enter your zip code and it'll pull you right to the location that's closest to you. So down here, that would be me. And again, your, your, the phone number is? 239-992-4779. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Susan. You've been very informative. It's great. Uh, you know, again, I, I really appreciate our, our partnership. And, you know, I think, you know, it's just, it's just the perfect, um, relationship that we all have. So thank you very much. Um, oh, it's truly my pleasure. So just so you all know, uh, next month we, we are featuring uh, Mary Schoenfeld, who is the executive director of the uh, Parkinson's Association for Southwest Florida. So that's January 24th at two o'clock. So that should be a good one. Um, Mary is very insightful and the Parkinson's Association I know is near and dear to Susan's heart. Uh, what You're doing something with Sugar Ray, can you just talk a second about that? Yeah, so I'm actually the chair for their annual fundraiser lunch. It is March 7th, and we will be having Sugar Ray Leonard come. So we've got quite a lot of exciting things going on for that event. I'm so excited you're having Mary next month. Um, 
Parkinson's is very near and dear to me. My grandfather had it. My husband's uncle is currently living with it. And I just love that this is a cause here and the money raised here stays here in our community. It's helping people and it's changing their lives. So, you know, if you want to learn more information about that, you can reach out to me. I can get you in the right direction. But yeah, Sugar Ray Leonard's coming. We're very excited and hoping to raise a lot of money for a great organization. I know everyone loves kids and pets, but seniors, we, we got to raise the money for them too because they need it. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Susan. Thank you all for attending and we'll see you next month. Thank you. Bye.